is there a specific term that you call like what you did with me? Yeah, the work that um, I've been trained to do and that I'm feeling led to do, which is very intuitive work, is uh, called dream tending and deep imagination work. And it comes from a depth psychology practice um, and through Jungian, as in Carl Jung, Jungian thought, um, and is uh, part of the life work and research of Dr. Steven Eisenstadt, who actually helped co-found Pacifica with a lot of depth psychologists, some of whom you may know, like, uh, well, Joseph Campbell is a mythologist with a famous Joseph Campbell. He's a part of that posse, as well as James Hillman and uh, Mary Woodman and Robert Johnson. But it's a sort of a part of that cohort, and um, so there's a sort of academic or um, psychological component to it. But also, it's very indigenous. It's very intuitive. It taps into a lot of um, traditions from around the world, and really into our own traditions of how we interact with the world and th the lens through which we look at the world and how we are listening to what's around us and really settling into what's around us, how we're seeing, how we're being, how we're hearing, how we're experiencing. And that's something that will manifest itself, not just in you know our day-to-day -day life, but also within our sleeping life and what it visits us when the body kind of shuts off a little bit <laughs> and we enter into a, d a deeper state of consciousness um, into theta and then into delta, right? And we're very much in a place where our psyche, we could say our soul self can speak through us and through our lenses of perception that we use in the daytime in a much more direct way. And we're tapping into part of our own psyche in that moment, but also into the collective psyche that when we do wake up and, and our eyes are fully open, we can then see hints of that in the landscapes around us, whatever was presented in the dreamscape that's also in the in the waking scape. And we start to realize that there's a confluence between the two and that really... It's, I almost get chills saying this, that, that we're all dreaming, that the body is always dreaming, just as my hands are moving, that the, the world itself is always dreaming, that we are all in this sort of dialogue with each other, that we, because in our waking life, there is this sort of personality self, the ego self, that really can take over sometimes in our past stories, in our complexes, in our patterns that can kind of co-opt you know, who who we are in truth. And so there is a little bit more of a thinning of that when we are asleep. And so like I mentioned earlier, there is this more di direct contact. And, and a lot of people say, yeah, but it makes no sense. But what is happening is this beautiful sort of presentation that's uniquely just for us, through us, from wild imaginings and images and situations that maybe couldn't happen in waking life. But here's the thing, it's really the stuff of fiction and people say, well, then it's false. No, it's the stuff of, of the ultimate form of creativity. It's creativity ex itself expressing itself through you in a way where finally you can get your thinking mind that's judging, criticizing out of the way so you could just experience it. In the dreamscape, you're kind of like, it's almost like you're sitting there and it's like, all right, you're not going to let me do it when you're awake. So here, when you're asleep. <laughs> and of course, there, right? There are. I, I love what you're saying. And I can see <laughs> how passionate and excited you get in it because there's like a whole movement involved in it. Like there's this kind of energetic life involved in it. Like, you know, and I hear you say, yeah, people say, yeah, but it doesn't make any sense. But if we stay with it long enough, for me, at least it seems, it makes more sense than real life. In yeah. life, what we, our brain tells us how things work becomes pretty stale, you know? And, and we can see the box for what it is. Yeah. Like the box being, this is how things work. This is how I was told they work. This is how I'm making my world happen. And it kind of breaks through, I think, the, mm, the, the imaginings that our quote-unquote reality is the only real and that's what we have to trust that there's something much deeper that we're much bigger and larger than that for me that's my experience with it and it's yeah. a beginning of to trust something deeper 
rather than yeah. the logic mind saying, no, this is, this is how it has to be. 